Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Condo Insider, which is put on by um, White Council of Community Association, Association, also known as um, HCCA or Hawaii Council. So today I have the really uh, wonderful pleasure of having with us today Taylor Gray. He's an attorney. He is with um, Porter, Kiakona, and Copper. So you've been working with um, that law firm for quite a while. You, I think you started out as a paralegal, right? Uh, was well, as, as a law clerk. So when I was uh, in law school, I found this firm um, and have been here ever since. So I've, I've been practicing condominium law um, with the firm since 2017. Wow, you've been there a while. You're an oldie. <laughs> <laughs> And I yeah. also do some construction litigation, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm one of the um, attorneys here that do construction litigation, uh, covenant violation litigation, as well as just uh, general business litigation. Um, most of the litigation that our firm handles, I would say about 99% is through uh, condominiums or HOAs. Okay. So today we want to, um, I wanted to talk with or have um, t um, Taylor help me to address some issues that um, I've been getting some phone calls or some emails and I've been noticing some weird stuff. When you have um, overzealous, either a board member or it could be a homeowner. I know I was um, involved in a conversation with um, a couple people and um, <clears throat> one of the conversations came to about how they mopped the floor. And it's, you know, I've got that gray coating stuff, you know, which I would go, I would hate to mop that floor because, you know, that gray coating has got those grooves, right? If you make it too wet, the stuff's just going to sit in the grooves and dry and look dirty. And um, one had one version, the other one had another. It said that one was wrong, but her version was the correct way. And I kind of like sat there and I go, at the end of the day, when they're done, is it clean? <laughs> yeah. And the person doing that did it. <laughs> You know, having to clean that and listen to all these different people provide their input as to what is right or what is wrong. I could see how that person would probably be up to their uh, ears and uh, just frustrated by all this input. And and I think that's overzealous owners at, at its finest. Um, as long as, as, like you said, as long as it's getting done and it's clean, that's what matters. Right. So <clears throat> how does a board handle whether it's either an, a homeowner or a board member <clears throat> that's you know takes on this added responsibility and and we want to also tie it in with employee harassment mm -hmm. you know and, and that creates that could create a hostile work environment so what is your <clears throat> your best um legal advice on how a board should handle these situations um or create policies and procedures on how to address concerns regarding an employee and their work methods. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. Um, there, there needs to be some sort of policy. What we always recommend is, is a chain of command. Um, when you have, what's great about an association is you have so many different perspectives and so many people living in a community. Uh, and in Hawaii, that's there's more condominiums per square foot than pretty much you know, anywhere in the United States. And with that, you're going to get a, thousands of different perspectives on how things are done. So with that, it, the, through the democracy, uh, democratic process, you elect a board of directors and that board uh, retains a property manager or a managing agent. And that managing agent helps facilitate the uh, various needs of the association. So you have like your, the person cleaning the floors and the landscaping and all that stuff. And the board of directors is the one that's supposed to be providing them with the direction based on the input of the, the membership. However, a lot of members will try to tell, you know, let's say they have a tree out in front of their yard, uh, their house, and they want that contractor to cut it a certain way. That's different from the uniform appearance of the rest of the project which the board has already established. Um, that is incredibly frustrating for contractors um, that have to listen to the board. And then they also have to listen to one owner saying you should mop the floor left to right. And another owner saying you should mop the floor front to back. Uh, so what I always recommend is telling 
if there is a situation that escalates where you have a contractor that's saying, well, we just can't handle all this. We're, we're getting berated by owner one and owner two and owner three, and we just can't handle it. We recommend sending a letter and just gently reminding the owner that there's a lot of input and it's, there's only, it's a small island. So we only have so many contractors you can use before you scare enough where they don't want to come and do the work at all. So just the proper forum for that owner, if they have a dispute with the contractor is to go to the meetings, go to a board meeting, talk to the board and, and the owners are the uh, eyes and ears of the project. The owners are there. And so in a, in the best case scenario, that owner would provide a valuable input to the board and the board will then tell the contractor based on the input of our members, we would like to see X, Y, and Z done. And then it kind of brought up a good point where the contractors, cause it is a small island, people talk, you know, and um, <clears throat> eventually it's going to get to the point where a contractor is going to hear all this, but maybe they're willing to take out on the job. But they're going to charge you premium to cover on what they're anticipating from that board, you know. So you, so the board's got to be very careful because they could either lose any ability to find someone to do that particular job, or they're going to be paying double premium, if not triple, you know. Um, or exactly, exactly, and and most of the time, a gently worded letter just reminding the owner of that fact. <laughs> you know, if, if we start, if we're pestering this person, they're either going to walk off the job. And the next bid is going to be a lot higher. Um, so a gentle, a gentle reminder works. But in the worst case scenarios, there's times where an owner is just, they, they want something to be done their way. They're stubborn uh, as, as they, not the, as they should be, but they're paying so much in maintenance fees. So they expect world-class service and they want something to be done yesterday. And if they are not doing it to their standards, uh, to which they believe they're paying a premium for. Um, it's hard. It's hard for these owners not to take something personally. So at that point, we got these troubled owners that you have to then send additional letters and even threats of fines. Say, you know, this contractor can't be doing their job effectively if they're worried or looking over their shoulder, wondering when you're going to come and berate. Uh, so at that point, it's you have to then look out for the well-being of the project and make sure you can keep this contractor and not interfere with their ability to do their job. Right, because mm -hmm. that could be the, the contractor or the employee. And like in, in landscaping, <clears throat> um, you know, just like mopping, people have different ways. And so I try to tell people when they kind of complain to me, I try to tell them, I said, well, maybe instead of commenting or like, why are you doing it that way, which could be very... It could be um, deemed as being intimidating or offensive to the guy, the person performing the work. Why don't you ask him a question first? Like, wow, or, or say, well, wow, that looks kind of interesting and try to start up a conversation. Um, because there was one incident where um, people were complaining about how they trimmed a certain hedge. And um, some people wanted to look full from the inside out. And they actually explained to me when they don't trim it that way, then the chicken's nest on the branches inside. I go, good point. <laughs> yeah, it's a utility. Yep, exactly. They're you know, so reason. you got to find out the whys, you know, as to why they're to do it a server because there could be a specific reason why, you know, like even when it comes to painting a building, there's certain colors that fade faster than others. So, you know, I always encourage people to do a sample on the, like the west side of the buildings will fade a lot faster than probably the morning sun of the building. So they should really try to put, um, you know, paint a, paint a good portion just to see how long it will last, you know, and um, or how fast it'll fade, things of that nature, you know. But I, I've told people, I go, after you kind of explain it, people kind of get that aha moment, mm -hmm. you know, and um, then they're like, oh, didn't know that, you know, and that kind of stuff, um, which is encouraging. Um, one of the other things I get um, comments about is... Um, you know, they brought on somebody new and you know how resident managers, when they come in, sometimes they're taking over a project after there's been no resident manager or anybody on site for a couple of months. Because <clears throat> finding a resident manager or even a, an offsite person can take a couple of months. 
And um, so um, so he's got, they've got a lot of stuff to catch up on. Not only just the office stuff, but the outside duties that they need to take care of. You know, and it takes time. But when you move into a house, it's not instantaneous that you can put everything back together the way you, you know. So I have um, told some people, I said, you should probably make a list for the person of the priorities. Yes. And, That's um, important. I, and I said, you should probably try to post it on the bulletin board, maybe, you know, um, so that everybody kind of gets an idea that, hey, we've made these the priorities to get done. Um, and then off the side with, with the employee or contractor, let him know what the timeline is, you know. Because um, I know some boards at the end of the year, they put accomplishments for the previous year and what they want to do for the next year. Which, a laundry list. Yeah, yeah. It lets everybody know what's going on, you know, um, which I think is just awesome when they do that. You know? It's transparent. Um, yeah. There's goals and the resident manager and or whatever, the resident manager, site manager, uh, whatever contractor is responsible for handling that specific uh, detail knows what their objectives are and if they've been hitting uh, those punch list items. So, it, yeah. <clears throat> so if they have, if they have more things to do than have completed, uh, maybe the, maybe the uh, owners, those overzealous owners have, have reason to complain. Uh, and maybe it's time to think about hiring a different contractor to perform those services. Yeah. Lots. We have to make sure the list is reasonable. Exactly. That could be accomplished. You know, they have to be fair to that employee or that contractor. Um, and, you know, they could be, you know, in stages, like for the next three months, we're going to do this. Or at the end of the year, we hope to have this one, one or two issues completed. Because it could take six months or eight months just to even get it done. Because there's little bits and pieces, right, to get it done. And that's why it's important for those directives to be coming from the board. Um, so it's you know, a lot of owners, they have to be reminded of this uh, chain of command in a sense, because the ones that sign the, the checks at the end of the day is going to be the board and the property manager and the site manager all report to the board. And that way you can keep an accurate detailed list of accomplishments and or goals. Um, if you have a million different owners, there's going to be a million different priorities and it's going to drive those contractors crazy. And I, I have so many projects where they run out of contractors. It, word gets around where they especially like even property managers you, know, you have some troubled owners that you, you they just can't control themselves and you'll eventually we only have so many property management firms in hawaii and you get through you run through the gambit and at the very end of the day you're self-managed so you're not you're even in a worse situation you don't have professional help uh and the owner the board has to work harder just because one owner felt that it was their Kuliana are there and I don't know that they can tell these contractors what to do. Yeah. And, you know, over time, like there was one um, condo they were looking for, you know, shopping around for a new um, management company and um, they were getting some bids and they're like, oh man, they're like triple what we pay now. Like, well, how long have you had that kind of contract that you have now? Well, it's beyond 10 years. <laughs> so I'm like, hello, you're lucky you're getting that same price. Yeah. That and maybe you should give them a little bit of slack because you're expecting this much. But, you know, that contract was 10 years ago and you probably didn't have as much responsibilities before a managing agent to do, you know, or and you probably had a better site manager that took a lot of responsibilities that now you're expecting the property manager to do, you know. And um, and then the light bulb, I saw the light bulb. We're talking on the phone, but I literally saw the light bulb come through the phone, you know. <laughs> so... And, and again, too, with contractors, if you have a problem board and the word gets around, your management fee could also be greater than um, than some other people for if a simple size building. You're yeah. a sitting duck. They, they know that you're a problem building and you're going to have, you have a lot of characters and you can't control those characters. And, and fortunately, that's what increases everyone's maintenance fees and it's those premiums just because a few owners want something to be done. Uh, their way and not engage in a productive discussion at a board meeting um, where things can actually be effectuated. And when you just yell at a contractor, the contractor knows where, where they're getting paid. And it's, it's, they're not dummies. They know it's not you, it's the board. So they're gonna, it's just gonna create dissension and it's gonna, 
lead to an unfortunate, you know, divorce or they're going to pay, they're going to make you pay for it. <laughs> no one takes a verbal abuse for free. Right. Yeah. And, um, and also, you know, that verbal abuse, I mean, that doesn't that go into the same line of harassment, right? Yeah. Especially if you have a site, if the association has employees and the association's board has a responsibility to make sure that their employees are free from a hostile work environment. And one of the most common things we see are owners yelling at, you know, like, like you're mopping the floor example. Uh, maybe, you know, they weren't yelling about it, but if somebody doesn't clean something right away um, or they see someone sitting, you know, in their golf cart on their phone and they harass them for not working and, and then they, you know, make a complaint that they can't work uh, comfortably, the board is on the hook for any lawsuits for a hostile work environment. Right. So at that point, um, what we recommend is immediately sending a letter to that owner. Say, you might not know. You might just be asking this person, why aren't they, you know, there's a mess right there. There's a bunch of leaves that you aren't picking up. Why are you just sitting on your acole and not doing something about it? Um, but by you doing that, you're not that person's boss. And if you do that constantly, you're, you're, the board is now responsible if that person takes workers comp for a mental, uh, for mental reasons, uh, or yeah. if that person sues, the board is on the hook for that. Um, yeah. and they could even make a complaint, uh, to the state and, um, that could be investigated. And now you're now you, yeah, now you're even more trouble. So at, at that point, it's, you have to, you, you have to nip that in the bud and you have to tell that owner you got to stop talking to this person because we have to provide this person a safe space. Yeah. Um, let's go back to the property manager. Um, um, cause I know I have, um, I heard one property manager said, everything comes through me and I go like, are you sure you want that? All that. But there has to be, um, a balance of, of they've taken on all this stuff. And I'm like, now you're going to have all these owners calling you and, you know, berating you about this, berating you about that. You know, and eventually, I mean, I know they have a responsibility to protect the board because that's who they work for, but there has to be a balance of what's reasonable and what's unreasonable. Um, and, and also telling the board, hey, you know, this is a valid complaint or value, val valid issue that um, we need to address. Um, so why is the employee doing this, this, and this, you know? Um, it, because complaints not always are, are negative. Sometimes they are positive. They can lead to um, some positive things or something that the board wasn't even aware of. So they have to go be approachable with open eyes, not just <clears throat> another homeowner calling, you know? Yeah, and that's a great point. You, you, there are so many issues that stem from that point. There's a balancing test that also needs to be done because they have their representatives of the board. And the owners have to contact someone when they have complaints, like you're saying, meritorious complaints. And so we always advise general managers, and property managers, you have to have thick skin to be in this job. You don't have to take harassment, but you have to know that there, there's going to be complaints. There's going to be constructive criticism, and it's not necessarily indicative of your work or it's not targeted against you individually. It's how tank, how can the association be better. And you as having that thick skin, you can't have every criticism just eat at you and think that it creates a hostile work environment. So that's one part of the balancing test. The other part is these owners have, you know, their first amendment freedom of speech. So unless there's something that is threatening or something that arises, usually um, the hostile work environment claims don't, uh, are not really directed at property managers or agents. It's mostly employees. Um, so the general managers would say, you have to have a thick skin. But your employees that are man you know, manning the front desk or that are um, doing landscaping from here or there that are employed by the association, those owners have no business talking to. But owners, you know, and, you know, or if they want, you know, or not necessarily they have no business talking to them, but they don't have any business critiquing them or, or questioning what, why or you know their methods when they have those concerns they bring it to the supervisor 
the general manager or the site manager. Um, so that's the person that we direct this. You know, you have to have that thicker skin so that these complaints can be um, brought to the proper uh, person to make the uh, to implement the changes, the board of directors. If you just instantly think that everything is a criticism of your job and you never bring that to the board, that's where we find these owners are very frustrated because they are trying to bring their concerns to somebody and it's just being it's being uh, kicked down the road or it's being thrown in the trash can and it's never brought to the proper uh, party. I think I saw someone's website. I think it was an HOA website um, where they had emails to address um, complaints or concerns. So instead of having to pick up the phone and, you know, leave a voice message, at least there's a um, an email. And um, sometimes that might be better than, can you just call me? You know, because uh -huh. when you call your, 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 your emotions, um, take over versus if you're having to sit and write it, you know? Um, yeah. So you're detached a bit having to actually think type, you know, you always have those keyboard warriors, but having to, to actually go and, and type your concerns and send it, you know, well, maybe it's not that big of a deal. I'll let it, I'll sleep on it. And then, yeah. okay. Yeah. I was overreacting. I had a bad day at work. Um, I shouldn't be taking this out on, you know, the poor, whoever that's just trying to do their job. Um, so it, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. And that sometimes that's even fe better than doing a suggestion box. You know, I mean, I, I go just e email them, you know, um, I know sometimes I tell people, I go, yeah, I get irritated about something and I send an email, but I don't click send. I wait. <laughs> I, go, yeah. I go take a break and then come back and read it again. Well, in our job, everything is always heated with opposing counsels and there's a lot of emails and a lot of uh a lot of times I've written things that I slept on and never sent them. So I'm yeah. very thankful that email exists, right? Yeah, exactly. But you got your frustration out. Yeah. Yeah. A catharsis in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so you're going to be one of our speakers on our May 25th. It's a Saturday. And it's um, it's a half day um, at Oahu Country Club. And um, we're going to, it's also going to be with um, Attorney Nalan. And um, we have Lori Sides with the um, DC State Condo Specialist. She's been there for quite a long time. And uh, we're really going to talk about board of directors' duties and responsibilities, also owners' duties and responsibilities. Um, and we're going to have a handout that um, that's going to incorporate a lot of the DCCA, you know, their little handouts. It's going to be like on a poster size um, that hopefully um, people can post it. Um, where they in their office and then there's going to be another version where um it could be posted on their um bulletin board so the owners know because one of the big questions i get from people is from some board members they go we always get asked like what do you guys do <laughs> <laughs> and that can vary from project to project because there's not a lot of consistency um with how directors operate uh unfortunately and i think what the dcca do is doing uh with working with the hcca um to make this kind of common knowledge uh, will hopefully help bring a uniform approach uh, and educate everyone as to how you should act as a board of director and as an owner, what is your responsibility uh, and how should you uh, operate and conduct yourself in a community living situation. Right. Because um, as they say, you're when you're in the board meeting, you're a board member. But once you leave that, you're unit owner 101. You no longer get the board hat on. Oh, and that's a great point too. One of the things we we get a lot uh, with vendors complaining or resident managers complaining is when these directors think that they are the heir supreme, um, or uh, that they that they are directors outside of board meetings that they can go up to an employee and say, "Well, I I'm a director. Um, I want you to do X, Y, and Z this way." And they don't understand, and it's it's a hard concept to kind of uh, to comprehend, is that you have a hat. You know, when you're in that meeting, you're wearing your director hat. But when you're outside, you're an owner. And a lot of times, these vendors don't know the difference. They, you're not wearing your board of director t-shirt on uh, to let them know that you have the power as a board member to actually tell them what they can and cannot do. So they might feel insecure and or uh, a little bit skeptical of why you're telling them what to do 
And that's not the direction that they got from the board majority. And that can get people in trouble. And like I've told some people I, when we're talking like the finances, I said, your condo is a business. You're, you're handling money. So that means it's a business entity. And, um, and Sue Savio also said the same thing on that PBS series that she did um, a couple of weeks ago. And I'm like, oh, yeah. You know, so when you're working in a business environment, you're not there 24 7. So it goes to saying, you know, that, yeah, you're a board member when you're in that meeting, but you're not 24 7. There's only select few, which the government has, de has declared as being essential, right? But board of directors are not essential, you know. Um, um, you know, so really, when you go up to your unit, you're just a unit, a unit over, just like my neighbor next door, you know. Um, so people have to realize, I remember um, way back when I'd be coming home, you know, kind of tired and just want to take off my clothes and put, you know, something comfortable on, get off the pantyhose and the heels, you know. And there'd be somebody waiting to ask me a question. I'm like, oh, my God. I should have went and had a drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and and that can get the that can get the association in trouble um if you say something not saying you would because you know your stuff but if you are an individual owner and you make a representation and that person believes that you're on the you're making that representation on behalf of the board you're now binding the board to something that was never actually voted on and you could you know, the association could get sued based on you know what one director is saying outside of a board me uh, board meeting that's not reflected in the minutes. You know we've had situations where um, in Waikiki they have uh, short term vacation rental bans um, in the specific project, and one owner says, "Ah, no one enforces it. You can go ahead and do it." And that person takes that as gospel because that's the vice president of the board saying, "Well, we haven't enforced it in a while." And then when they do enforce it, they're saying, "But that person told me I can do it." And they yeah. have detrimentally relied on them. the same thing with contractors all the time. They tell them, Hey, you can skip this floor, just focus on this one. And then the owners on that floor are saying, well, what the heck? We didn't, when are you, you going to come back down here? <laughs> when are you going to come back down here? It's like, Oh, well, the board member told us we didn't have to. And that wasn't a director from the old board. That's just one board member that improperly said something outside of a meeting. So that's why we always say, make sure you know what hat you're wearing. Yeah, and exactly. You can say, you know, same with emails outside of a board meeting. We're going to have to be doing some continuous training on that because I, it's continuous. I always get that. Are oh. they not supposed to be doing that outside of a board meeting? I go, yeah, here's the attachments. You know, here's the handouts that we did with DCCA. So go and to I, it. <laughs> and as a litigation attorney, I see that all the time. Where I, Why are you putting these things in an email? Now it's all disclosed. You know, you were, this was an executive session where it's supposed to be. But now you guys discussed a whole bunch of improper things via email, and that's all discoverable. Um, and now it's out in the ether, and everybody knows about it. And that could have all been avoided had you just followed the, the proper procedures. Right. Okay, so we're nearing our end. So, Taylor, I really want to thank you. This was enjoyable, very informative. Um, I'm really looking forward to the May event. Um, and um, so it's going to be morning. I think it opens at 11 or no, 8 o'clock. And there's going to be a buffet breakfast for everybody. Um, and um, so we'll hope nobody falls asleep during, during you know, eats too much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to this one. The Jews and disabilities. Me as well. And I appreciate being here and speaking with you about this topic. It's something that we see all the time and uh, Hope to provide a little bit more context and information to those directors as well as residents that are that are looking to yell at their next vendor. Yeah, looking forward to you, young, because you, you took over most of Larry's um, condos. Yes, you will. You know, she had so many, and she's been yeah. a staple in our industry for so long. Uh, so it's it's so much work for for everyone um, yeah. to, to handle. So thankfully, my my partners uh, have been able to take some of that load off, but. Yeah, as the newest partner of the firm, I've been having to inherit a lot of those. It's, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> Give it to him. He's a newbie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Put me through my paces. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. And we I look forward to working with you on the um on the May seminar as well as um I think our board of director training as well, I think. Yes. Yes. Okay. Like Great. So everybody tune in. 
Um, go to hawaiicouncil.org, register for our May 25th seminar. Um, it's going to be a half a day, and we're going to start off with a buffet breakfast in the morning and get our program going. So thank you, um, Taylor. I look forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank you. this show, why don't you give us a like or subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much.